Hi guys. Uh, I'm just okay. I'm on my way to work, um, but I'm gonna stop by Starbucks beforehand. So I wanted to do like an informal kind of vlog style um, and see what happens. <laughs> but I did want to share some of the apps that I'm using on my phone right now currently to prepare for my trip to Japan. So I'm going to, um, it's kind of odd because this is my first time like trying to record like this and there's like a bunch of people coming. Um, yes, yeah, so later on when I get home, I think I'm gonna uh, sit down and just show you the apps that I'm using on my Galaxy S23 Ultra that I've been using the last couple of months to prepare for the upcoming trip to Japan. Um, I think they would be useful if you are into trying to plan a trip and especially a trip internationally or to Japan like I am. Okay, so I stopped real quick because I didn't get a chance to record while I was ordering because I completely forgot. So I'm a total noob at vlogging, but um, I got the blonde espresso vanilla ice latte with only two pounds of vanilla and it's all. That's like my go-to. And then I also got a chocolate croissant. driving to work because I don't want to be late but yeah see you later so I am right here at this plaza by work and I'm just gonna go grab something to eat because um, I'm super hungry I didn't bring lunch so that's like my second meal uh, buying food but oh, drop something. <laughs> but yeah come along Hi guys, finally sitting down to record this video. I just really want to share which apps I'm using on my Galaxy S23 Ultra to prepare for my trip to Japan. And also some of these apps I've already used before for other trips in the United States. So stay tuned if you're interested in knowing which apps I'm using on my Galaxy S23 Ultra to prepare for a trip to Japan. In order to make this video easier, I just put them all on this home screen so I don't have to go back and forth between the app drawer and my home screen. This way they're easy for you to see all of them all at once. And I'll start with the first app here called Airlo. Air Airlo? I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but this app I learned of recently and this will be my first time using it. Um, I learned about this app from another creator on TikTok and I'll go ahead and link their name here somewhere if I find her. But she mentioned in her video that she had used this app when she was traveling to Japan so I thought I would give it a try. Uh, this app is going to give me internet or data while I'm in Japan. It does not offer phone service but it does offer internet co connection with this app. So since my carrier international plan is pretty costly, I opted to use this app because it's more affordable. But do keep in mind that this app only works with phones that support eSIM e -SIM, or that are eSIM compatible. And you can use this in 200 plus countries and they have different options for that. I'm going to be using the one for Japan obviously and they have different packages that you can choose from. Particularly for me, I'm going to go for the 20 gigabytes for 30 day validity. I'm not going to be there for 30 days but I'm most definitely going to need those 20 gigabytes if not more. And this is more affordable to me than purchasing the SIM card itself because the SIM card itself does not support um, phone calls either it's also just data from the ones that I saw and they were more expensive than this option just keep in mind like I said before that it is only compatible with those phones that support eSIM 
and this is relatively a new feature so i'm really grateful that my galaxy s23 ultra supports that because i want um i'm able to take advantage of this application so i love the price here is 26 dollars for 20 gigabytes for 30 days and when i looked at the sim card options they were 50 dollars around 50 dollars for the same amount of data so this is super convenient and i like that you can also add more data if you need more during your trip if you run out you can add more uh, data and you can pick different packages to top up so that's just perfect for me it hit all the boxes and i'll let you know how this works out for me when i'm in japan the next app that I really like to use, it's called Airbnb. And if you haven't heard of it before, it's basically an app where people put up their houses for rent, for short-term rentals, and you can rent people's houses from here or even just a room or um, a studio and things like that. And so I've used this app to book Airbnbs in Japan and I loved it. I never had a problem with them. Originally in Japan, Airbnb wasn't really favored or accepted, so I did have a little bit of issues the first time that I used them. Not while I arrived to Japan, but before when I would book a house and eventually, um, because I would book so far in advance, I would get cancellations and I would have to scramble and look for a new house. But that is not the case. This time around, the houses that I booked were completely like i didn't have any cancellations nothing everything was perfect so i'll let you know once i get there how things work out and but i haven't had any issues with airbnb i love them i highly recommend it the next app or apps that i like to use are car service apps um this one here is a new app that i recently heard of it's called diddy and i think that's how you pronounce it i've never used it myself but i hope this will come in handy during my trip to japan think of this app as an uber but for taxi service internationally i do have uh, uber and lyft because that's those are apps that i use for other travel that i do domestically uber is big in the united states so i use them a lot lyft is also pretty big but i did run into issues when trying to book a lyft out of the airport so that's why i have uber and lyft because sometimes uber works better than lyft and sometimes lyft is cheaper than uber so that's why i have those two apps then for my rental car apps i use turo and hertz these two here basically these two give me also perks through my credit card provider and they have like special, I guess, contracts with these companies where they give you like extra points for using them and things like that. So that's why I have them and that's why I use them. So I usually alternate between the two. Turo is, think of it as like an Airbnb, but for your car. So people post their cars here and they rent them out and you can book from them from there. So it's a little bit different than a traditional rental car company like Hertz. These ones you have to go pick up the car or pay a fee to have the car driven to you. Whereas Hertz is an, you know, a rental car company that you'll find in certain locations and especially in airports, you can easily go grab your rental car from Hertz, which is why I keep both of them because Hertz tends to be more convenient than Turo in my opinion. Um, I have yet to try Turo, but I do see that it is more affordable to use Turo in certain instances than Hertz, which is why I have both. It just depends on what what's going to work during that time. Then the next uh, apps that I use are my airline apps. I highly recommend that whichever airline that you're flying, you install their app because that app will let you um, check up on your flight. You'll be able to check in from the app and even show the QR code at the gate to board your flight. So it's also very convenient to use. Also when changing or upgrading your seat, it's super convenient to have the app because you can quickly do it from the app like American Airlines, any app that you want to use. You can quickly check your flight and things like that. I'm not going to go into any of these. Maybe I'll try to see. Um, I just don't want to you to see my flight yet but you can sign in with your mileage account 
and kind of see like uh, where you're going um, and it just has a lot of these apps come very useful because you can track your bags, track your flight, just super convenient. It tells you when you're boarding, um, it will give you a notification of when your flight's boarding. So if you're at the lounge, it will tell you like, hey, your flight's boarding, come over, you know, because you're about to board the plane. So I think that's very convenient to have. I highly recommend that you install the app of whichever airline you're flying so that you can have quick access to any updates, any changes you need to do, any information, it's all there in that app, easily accessible and convenient. Next to that is Priority Pass. Priority Pass is basically a subscription service that lets you access lounges in different areas and different airports. And this is also an included benefit of my credit card, but I have not used this app yet but I do have it on here so that it's easy for me to locate any lounges that are in the airport and that way it's easy to navigate and I know what which uh, airports I can which lounges I can use and things like that and I like how it has like a map and um, you can search by airport and see where they have lounges that you have access to with this specific application the app below that is called game launcher this is an app by samsung and it's basically an app that acts like a gallery or an ecosystem where it keeps all of your games together and kind of separate from the rest of your apps and it also has tallies where you can compete against other friends on certain games and things like that but this is the app that I use for my trips to Japan that I've used in the past and this is called um, Cross Me which I love this app because it's a nonograms app and basically what nonograms are as explained by Wikipedia they're picture logic puzzles in which cells in a grid must be colored or left blank according to numbers at the side of the grid to reveal a hidden pixel art like picture so if you can see right here you start counting um, how many squares are here and what color they should be filled and it's just kind of like a puzzle if you've never played it before highly highly recommend it it stimulates your brain so i definitely recommend this app i love these games they're wonderful great time killers i may also take along my uh, steam deck but for now this will also be an app that i'll be using if my steam deck is not something i want to play the next app next to that is called kluk kluk i think that's how you pronounce it basically this app lets you book attractions uh jr pass entertainment different outdoor things hotels and things to do in different countries that you visit and for me obviously i'm going to japan so i was able to book certain uh things that i wanted to do like for example team lab planets and also universal studios japan i booked it through here it was super convenient so much easier than navigating the official websites of each location that i want to go to the next app that i'm using is called wonder log and this app is super great because you're able to have an itinerary of everything that you're going to do, keep track of your expenses, invite collaborators to add places that you want to visit, places you want to eat at, any interest. And you can even put it by day of exactly what you're going to be doing each day. I particularly, we're not going to be following it 100%. But it's nice to have that because you don't want to be trying to search for what to do once you're at your destination. It's so much easier to do that research in advance. The next app next to that or the next app is called a Google Translate. If you've never used Google Translate and or if you've never heard of it, this is an app by Google that lets you translate one language to the other. And I love this app. I've used it on my previous travels to Japan. It's super convenient. It's not 100% accurate, but it is definitely 
very helpful and a lifesaver when you absolutely do not speak the language of the country you're going to. I love that it has the conversation option, which basically lets the other person talk in their language and then it will translate in real time and tell them in their language and you can just play the sound for them. And then they can do the same to you where they speak into the phone in their language and it will you can play it back to yourself in your language and you can have a conversation like that. Love that. The next thing to that is the camera, which is a function that we used a lot when we were in Japan, especially when we were in rural areas where there was no English menus at restaurants. The camera app is amazing. You point it at the text that you need to translate and it translates for you in real time, which is great because when you do not speak Japanese and you need to order food, it's super convenient to have something like this. Highly recommend that if you do not speak the language to the country that you're going to, you give Google Translate a try. Must, must, must. I recommend it. The final and last app that I'm going to recommend on today's video is going to be Google Maps. Google Maps is wonderful for many, many reasons. I've used it for many, many years but I've also used it on my previous trips to Japan and I highly recommend that you use this app if you are also traveling to Japan. The reason why this, this app is useful while you're traveling in Japan is because it, it's really accurate on the times of the train system. So you're able to navigate when you're going from one destination to the other, the time that you need to be at which station on which platform at what time exactly because depending on the train that's there at that moment at that minute could be going a completely different place so it's really helpful to know where you need to be at and the google maps app lets you see that really easily it now even tells you which card to board that will be most efficient for your trip so that you can easily get in and out of the station we used this app on our previous trips to Japan and it was a lifesaver. At one point our group got separated, but with this app we were able to navigate successfully to our destination and find each other. The other great feature of Google Maps, and which is why I also highly recommend that you install this app when you're traveling abroad, is that it also comes with a location sharing feature so that you can share your location with your trip mates and you will definitely not get lost because then you will know exactly where everybody is at all times these are the apps that I recommend to, that you use on your Galaxy S23 Ultra or any of your Android phones or Apple phones. All of these apps are compatible with iOS. So I highly, highly recommend that you give them a try. If you're preparing for your own trip to Japan, these are a must and definitely recommend that you install them on your phone as well. Thank you for tuning into today's video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.